And we're back here on TalkUSA.TV. Now joining me on the Peerless Boilers hotline, former New York football giant, won two Super Bowls with the New York Giants, and now he's a stud at Westwood One Radio, and that is Sean Landetta. Sean, Zach Gelp here, TalkUSA.TV. Thank you for joining me, and how are you this evening? Very well, Zach. Great being with you tonight. Well, thank you for coming on, and I've got a lot of questions today about punters getting into the Hall of Fame, and you're up there with Ray Guy. The two of you have just such prolific punters. Do you ever think we'll see a day when a punter gets into the Hall of Fame? Well, I appreciate those kind words. I hope uh, one day in Canton, Ohio, you see a punter in there. So far, they have not seen fit to, to put anyone in. Ray Guy has been a finalist five times, I believe, and Hopefully at some point, whether it's them or the Veterans Committee, you'll see he he get in and him get in, which he should. And uh, hopefully once that happens, there'll be a few others get in. But uh, so far, they're not there yet, but let's see what happens. Well, you look at the New England Patriots, a team the Giants play this week, and the Patriots for many years had a kicker in Adam Vinatieri. He won them a Super Bowl in 2001. He won them a Super Bowl in 2003 with two game-winning kicks. And most people forget in 2004 he had a game-winning field goal with eight minutes left that wasn't at the final seconds like it was in the two previous Super Bowls. How would Adam Vinatieri not get into the Hall of Fame with the ample amount of success that he's had in this league? Well, I, I agree with you. I think you're going to see him get in the Hall of Fame. His time is up. There is one pure kicker in the Hall of Fame, Jan Stenerud. Uh, George Blanda and Lou Groves are also in the Hall of Fame, but they played other positions. But I think once Vinatieri's time is up, uh, if you look at his body, his work, and especially, as you said, what he did in the Super Bowls, I don't think there's any questions we may see him in Canton, Ohio. Well, last night I know you were at the John Franco event, and the reason I know that is because the program director here, Mark Rosamond, the ball guy that interviewed you with the gold tee, uh, as he told me to describe um, himself to you, he was talking to you, and you mentioned something about your experience at Mets camp. Is there any chance we see uh, Sean Landetta playing for the New York Metropolitans next year? No, no. You know, it's interesting. Growing up in Baltimore, I was very lucky. The Orioles were terrific in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. In fact, I went to six World Series between the age of five and 21, and uh, baseball probably is my favorite sport. And In the wintertime, I'm down in the Jupiter County area, and the New York Yankees and Mets through the years have been very nice to me, inviting me to camp, and last year I actually was able to get up there for a day, so hadn't played a baseball game since uh, the spring of 1979, but I uh, put a uniform on, went out there, and I th- certainly enjoyed it, but no one on the Mets has to worry about me threatening their job, that's for sure. <laughs> We're talking to Sean Landetta, and Sean, Brandon Jacobs of the Giants said, uh, to quote him, things didn't go well for me because I'm not feeling well, I'm not happy, and close quotes. What do you make of Jacobs' comments? Well, you know, I think sometimes players, you know, get cornered a little bit. And sometimes they'll, they'll say things. It's not that they don't mean what they say, but, uh, you know, they're frustrated and they're angry. And listen, Brandon Jacobs is proud to be a New York Giant. Uh, I, I saw him last week at an event, and he'd love nothing more than to finish here. And You know, the way things started out last year and went good, they finished up good. Uh, hopefully that'll happen here this year. But he's loved being a giant, and, uh, you know, like most players, he just feels he wants to be uh, taken care of and wanted as one. So let's see what happens with him. I hope, hope things work out because he really is a wonderful man besides being an outstanding running back. He came into the league and he was just such a lethal back. And then this year he's struggling. He only has 126 yards and two touchdowns. With the controversial comments that he said, what would you say to Brandon Jacobs if he was your teammate? Is that something you even touch upon or you just let him do what he has to do? Well, it would depend on my relationship with him. But, you know, if there's something I felt I could tell him that could be positive and he would know that, uh, you know, it would be coming from a teammate being said in a positive way, I certainly do it. Uh, You know, he's been in the league for a long time. You know, he's seen a lot of things, and he understands how this goes. So, uh, you know, hopefully that can all get worked out. And I don't think it it will be a distraction to the Giants because once you get suited up and you get out there, you don't think about that. But uh, Giants are off to a great start. A big opportunity for them to, uh, you know, show the NFL that, hey, we're really pretty good if they can go up and beat New England. And it's just such a terrible time for the whole Jacobs thing to come out. You don't want negative criticism just solely on the fact that this is just such a tough uh, stretch of games till the end of the season for the New York football Giants who are at 5-2. and If I were to tell you, let's say, on Monday, Brandon Jacobs is released, what would be your reaction? 
I'd be very surprised, very surprised, because, uh, you know, I still think he's a productive player, and I think the Giants feel that way, but, uh, you know, certainly if the Giants ended up doing something like that, they'd have to feel that he'd gotten to a point where he's no longer in the best interest of the team. Now, I still think he has a lot to offer, and, you know, let's hope somehow that uh, Sunday he can make some big plays up there and uh, everything can go forward in a positive manner. We're talking a two-time Super Bowl champion, Sean Landetta, former Philadelphia Eagle, as well as New York football giant. And, Sean, Eli Manning has been phenomenal in the games that they have won. Uh, last year, a lot of criticism he has taken was solely on the fact that he threw the ball to the opposing teams too many times. What difference have you seen in Eli's approach this year to limit those turnovers? Well, certainly, he, he through the first half of the year, has been able to limit those. If if you look at how well he played last year, uh, and you just take a few of those turnovers away, he, he really has a good year. So I'm sure he knew that, worked hard to address it, and uh, we still have a lot of football left. But through half the first half of the season, he is one of the elite quarterbacks in the league. He's playing great, the best he ever has. And, you know, let's hope it's going to be like this for here on out. He's, uh, he's a veteran, but still relatively young, and uh, I'm so happy for him because he's handled a lot of pressure a lot of criticism, and uh, with all that going on, he, he's just continued to get better each year. Do you see the Giants this week coming out heavy on the throw? You know, this Patriots secondary, and I watch them every single week, they're just decimated with injuries, and they just don't look like they have the talent to be a championship-winning secondary. Do you think uh, number 10 goes out throwing more than usual this week? Well, I tell you, he's been throwing a lot. Last week he put it up 45 times. You look at the Seattle game which, uh, you know, it's a shame, and that loss, what got got missed there is the way he beautifully brought that team down to the five-yard line so quickly at the end, and uh, that magnificent drive, maybe his best of the year, but uh, I'm sure they'll put it up 35, 40 times, and they certainly want to try to run the ball, too, but it's been tough to do that against the way one, but uh, no question that if you look at the teams that have had success against the Patriots, they've been able to throw it, and, uh, you know, I'm sure we'll look for that Sunday. We were talking about the tough schedule. It's not easy. You're playing the quarterbacks uh, in the next few weeks. Tom Brady, Drew Brees, Aaron Rodgers, Tony Romo, Michael Vick. As a player, if you're sitting in your locker room, what's your thoughts? You're sitting at 5-2 and two right now, and you have a very tough schedule in front of you. Well, most players, we, we realize that uh, the schedule is what it is. You have to play who they say you play. But it, it may sound redundant, but it is really a one-at-a-time thing, you get ready this week to play New England. Study real hard. Go up there. Play your best golf ball game. Try and get out of there with a win. Uh, if you win, great. If you don't, you don't. You come in Monday, who's next on the schedule? You know, you, you, you got to take this thing piece by piece. And uh, I think the Giants may surprise a few people. There's no question the teams they play are among the best teams in the league right now. But we all know how this thing changes. Uh, one of these teams gets a few guys hurt. Somebody loses a game or two. And, all of a sudden, things are different. But uh, great that they've opened up 5-2, and two, and you know certainly they're in pretty good shape here in the NFC East. Zach Elp here on TalkUSA.TV, and Sean Landetta joins us on the Peerless Boilers hotline. Peerless builds America's best boilers. And, Sean, uh, this Giants uh, defensive line, they have been phenomenal this year. They have just been causing a plethora of havoc on opposing teams' quarterback. Break down this matchup this week as the Giants' defensive line goes up against a pretty talented group in the Patriots' offensive line. Well, certainly uh, everyone knows Tom Brady's a great player, and those people who really understand football know that a big reason for him being able to show his talent is the protection he has and a combination of the plays that are called to put him in a situation where he can do what he does best. I mean, the, the, the strength of the New York Giants, I think, the last few years has been their defensive line. You just look at the number of talented guys there, and, and you need more than two or three, and they certainly have that, you know, to be able to create problems there for, for quarterbacks and not will be more important than this week. I mean, they've faced a lot of good QBs coming into Sunday, but certainly none better than Tom Brady. So, uh, obviously, the key to them winning, I feel, besides being able to attack their, their defensive secondary, will will to be will be to try to do, uh, even though it's four year re- years removed, try to do what they did in Super Bowl 42 and get back there, harass him, hit him, make him throw on the run. And uh, if they're able to do that, that'll give them a great chance. 
A ton of teams, and you saw it last week, the Patriots went up against the Pittsburgh Steelers, and their offense was stopped for two reasons. One, because Brady wasn't on the field for a whole uh, lot of the game, and the other one was the Steelers played a man defense. And in the past, when zone defenses were played against the Patriots, Brady would find Gronkowski, Hernandez, and Welker and just really tear up the secondary. Just ask the Dallas Cowboys about that. Do you think more teams are going to start playing man coverage on Tom Brady? Well, you know, it, 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 that's a tough thing. First of all, you got to feel like you got the guys in place to do that. And each team has, you know, the, you know, if you'll say the, the way they do things, you know, what, what works best for them. And uh, I, I think, again, that's a week-to-week thing. Who are you playing? What's their personnel? What has worked best for them? You know, what is their MO as far as their defensive coordinator is concerned? But no matter what it is, man – no matter if it's zone, I mean, the defensive line is going to have to get up there, get some pressure because they work hand in hand with the DBs, you know, as far as allowing them not having to cover all day and get picked apart by a guy like Brady. Wes Welker has just been tearing up the league. He has almost 1,000 yards on the year, and he has a plethora of touchdowns. With that being said, if you're the Giants' defensive coordinator, how would you go in containing Wes Welker this week? Well, that, that's a great question. I mean, it, it seems that, uh, you know, if he catches six passes or seven passes, which for most receivers is a great day, that's that's almost considered shutting him down, you know, the way he's been able to catch balls. Just you got to put your best guy on him. You have to be able to read his moves, study tape, understand what he does his, his best, you know, and what plays they like to run, run him to, and it just has to be great, great concentration on part of the defensive backs who are covering him. Because, again, you can't blink for a minute because this guy's quick and he's a very, very good player. Sean, two more questions right before we let you go as we're talking to two-time Super Bowl champion Sean Landetta. I'm going to put you in the role here of a GM. I was talking to Kurt Warner. I was talking to Charlie Casterly, and I asked him this question. If the Indianapolis Colts have the number one pick in this year's draft. Peyton Manning will be returning healthy next year. Andrew Luck is obviously coming out this year, and he'll be the number one overall pick. If you were the Colts GM, would you take Andrew Luck, knowing at what you have with number 18? Well, I think the one question that would have to be answered to me very clearly is, number one, is Peyton healed, and what do the doctors feel? You know, it, it looks like for him on a long-term prognosis, because I think Peyton Manning can still, if he's healthy and able to play, still be a very, very high, uh, a very proficient, high-productive quarterback for another three, four, or five years. I would stay with him because he's proven it, he, he's done it, and he would just have to be in the physical shape to do it. Andrew Luck, we all understand how great he is in college. I'm sure he's going to be a pretty good pro, but you just don't know. We've seen too many quarterbacks in the last 25 years come out in the first round that it just didn't work, even with the hype. So keep that in mind. And we mentioned you won two Super Bowls, and I'm sure you get this question asked you a ton of times. Which one stands out more to you in your mind when you go to bed at night? Was it the first one or the second one? Well, certainly any time you, you do something you've always dreamed of and wished for the very first time, there's... Nothing that can replace that, but the second one you can make a case is more special. We beat a Buffalo Bills team that basically was an all-star team. I mean, they had so many great players. Not good players, great players. And We played a game that was almost played to perfection on our part, and we still could have lost on the last play of the game. So uh, that second game was just an amazing win by us doing everything right, you know, at a certain time. But nothing was like that first one, especially the way that season went. And, I was very lucky to be part of that experience. Take me through that missed field goal. To to take it from the perspective of right before the snap is made and then once it missed, what's your reaction? Well, from our sideline, he was kicking right to left. And as he kicked the ball, halfway there, it looked pretty good. But one of our defensive backs, Roger Brown, who had rushed off the corner, and he wasn't able to lay out block the kick, but he ran behind Norwood. So he turned around, and out of the corner of my eye, I could see him jump because he was the first one that could tell that it was going to be wide right. So, you know, we kind of watched it. I watched it halfway, and out of my peripheral vision, I whipped my head to the right because I saw Roger jumping up and down before the ball even reached the, uh, the goal post, and that was, uh, that was a great moment for us. Unfortunately, Scott Norwood 
was such a great kicker. It's a shame it had to happen to him, but uh, it was a great win for us and a great Super Bowl. Sean, thank, thanks so much. I appreciate it. Let's do it again real soon. Look forward to it. Thank you, Zach. Sean Landetta joining us on the Peerless Boilers Hotline. Peerless builds America's best boilers. A great-